Welcome back, you lovely people. This is video two in three car videos and one bike video for our sale on Saturday, the 10th of June here at Manor Park Classics. And my word, let's start with probably the best Cooper Evocation I have ever seen. This is a 1968, what looks like a Morris Mini Cooper, but it's not. So this, someone has gone to town and done a, a Cooper S Evocation, and I cannot tell you guys how perfect this is. If you can't afford a real one, because they are so expensive now, you'd buy this, and I would guarantee you would fool 99.9% .9 of the people. So it's only done 15,000 miles. It's a former multiple show winner, and when you look closer, you can see why. They spent 14 grand on parts alone. It's in tartan red with a black roof. It's got the correct 11 stud Cooper S engine, correct airbox, stage three head, ported, balanced, light, and it's built in a genuine Mark II shell. It's got the right wheels, the Dunlop SPs on it, it's retrimmed absolutely spot on. Honestly, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know, I guarantee it. You know, a lesser scrupulous person would have tried to pass that off as a Cooper. What I love about it, it is nut and bolt perfect. I think you'd fool, as I say, 99% of the people. But you're not paying Cooper money. It looks like a Cooper, goes like a Cooper. It's got a Cooper engine, it's got a Cooper badge. You're probably going to pay less than half, 16 to 18,000 pound for a car that I cannot fault. I adore that because you're playing the game, having all the fun, and you could buy something else with the money that you saved. Brilliant car, say 14 grand on parts alone. Remember that, guys. And it's been done so, so well. Really nice, even down to the twin fillers, look. It is a Cooper S in all but identity, that. Moving on to, we've, I don't think we've ever had so many nice minis. We always have minis in the cell because we love them so much. I don't think we've ever had this many really nice minis. Moving on to the 1990. It's a Mini Cooper RSP, really nice. I've spoken before about the fact I love these narrow arch uh, later cars because they drive so well. They, they really do drive so well on the little wheels. 35,000 miles, three former keepers. They only made 1,050 of these. The mileage is supported by the MOT certificates and the service history, so we think very much this is genuine mileage. And again, a very hard car to fault. Refurbished alloys, a matching numbers car, original book pack. Last of the carburetor minis. So much to love here, original dealer sticker. It's had a brake overhaul a couple of years ago and it's had recent body work to the tune of 3,000 pounds. So it's had some paint, but it's had some very, very nice paint, I have to say. And that's 14 to 16. As you can see, these minis are starting to become valuable little cars now because everyone's appreciating what they are. They're very usable, they're very easy and cheap to run, they're very cheap to insure. Everyone can service them. Every bit's available the next day. Smashing little thing. And I think there's a lot of love for these narrow arch cars. Very lovely car, 35,000 miles. That's all it's done. It's a small car, but it's not a Mini. We've got m other Minis to show you. This is great, isn't it? If you're an Italian car collector, you've got to have this. And I'm going to point out on camera, this probably looks very, very nice. Bodily, structurally, fabulous. Come close. I haven't seen a brush painted car for a while. This is brush painted. Interesting in this because the bodywork is really good. The interior is phenomenally good. Come and look at the interior. So I like the way someone's done this. Someone's obviously gone through with a car with a very nice shell. It's a 68 Auto Bianchi Type 264. Manual, 12,000 miles showing, which I guess is either around the clock or a clock reset. Have spent huge amounts of money on the interior, which is perfect. The body shell is great, but I think Buy this, have some fun with it, but budget on a respray at a later date. Or do you know what I did once? You know, I once brush painted a car, I'm ashamed to say, but we then wet flatted it and polished it, and it kind of, kind of looked all right. So I would say, actually, take this to a valeter, wet flat and a polish, that would look a hundred times better. And you could buy that car for four to five grand, and they're great, got a big boot, a lot of fun, very stylish, attractive little car. And like I say, if you like Italian cars, or maybe you are Italian, you want to drive something authentic, there's your car. Now this, I love, just come and have a look and get a front three quarter shot of this, Elliot. This is, underneath this, is a 1990 Rover Mini Mayfair, but someone has put onto it arches to make it look a bit sort of 60s, and don't they work really well? And a set of Mini Lights and a set of Yokohamas. But you can get, this is gonna be, look, look inside. This is done, 31,000 miles, and that's all genuine and legit, all original interior, Four former keepers, all original spec, all original paint, unrestored Mini Mayfair with just a couple of very, very cool mods and don't they work well? Just, it's amazing with the Mini, the aggro, the attitude that they add if you put just arches and rims on. 
Loads of old MOTs, nine to 11,000 pounds. I adore this, not a Cooper, but in some ways I, I like the fact it's not a Cooper. Now, if you know your mini history, you'll know that the most important year is either the first one or the last one. This is the first one, 1959, and it's a November 59 as well, which makes it a very, very early car. And you can just see the genius of Isagonis in this. And what's amazing is it's sat next to the very last year. So if you come and shoot here, look, shoot through here, Elliot. You can see, there it is. You go from the early hinges and wing through to the later hinges and wing. Nothing really changed. You know, that door will fit on that car, roughly. That window will certainly swap over. They didn't need to change an awful lot because they just, they got it right, didn't they? They didn't have to change anything from 1959, even though there's slight tweaks and evolutions in the later shells. It's basically the same piece of packaging. But this car is a 59, 11,000 miles showing, right-hand drive, home market car, Engine rebuild in December 2020, and nearly two grand. And then it's got, as I say, all the workshop manuals from books. It's a really nice non-restored car or a very, very old restoration. And you can just see a little bit of patination. It's not perfect, but that makes it perfect, if you see what I mean, because there's nothing that's over-restored. You can see everything. It's very honest, very open little car. A few little imperfections, but what a lovely thing just to use and enjoy and tool around. 59s will always be good news, there'll always be a market for them because with anything in life, with any car, everyone wants the very first or the very last. And talking of which, so that's how it started and here's how it's going. This is it. Now, if you know your minis, the Frank Stephenson car, the BMW redesign, some of those are actually on Y plates. Some of those very early BMW minis are on Ys. This is on a Y, so this is the true crossover period, that bizarre moment in mini history when you could walk into a mini showroom and either buy the last of the old or the first of the new. Now this is nice, 64,000 miles, 10 grand spent on recommissioning work two years ago. Chassis, three out of 500, five former keepers. So loads of money spent, 12 entries in the service book, matching Yokohamas and MOTs back to 2004. So much lovely stuff on these Cooper Sport 500s. And have a look at the interior. You can really see the evolution because they were putting the sexy dashes in, the later mini wheel the trendy interiors, all the alloy furniture on the doors, two sets of keys, original book pack, and just, yeah, I love it. So you've got the wide arch, the wide track, compared to the early narrow body car, you can really see how the car evolved, can't you? So whether you want the very first or the very last, we've got you covered. Why don't you buy one of each? Maybe you're a mini collector or a car collector. If you're gonna have a mini, bookend them. First and last, there you go, first year, very last year. That's nice, as I say, 11 to 13, we'll probably buy that. And another exceptional car, this is a very low mileage one. This has done 46,000. This is a Mini Cooper Sport, subject to a full body resto in 2013. It's also got the full length roof, which really transforms the look and feel of these cars. So this has got 46,000 miles, again, new set of Yokohamas. All these Mini owners fit in Yokohamas, we love it. Always on a decent tire, look at the dash in that. Isn't it great? And as I say, a big, big bill for body restoration in 2013 by a very reputable specialist. So this is a car that wants for nothing. And these later cars have got all the Paddy Hopkirk style lights on. This is an X-Reg. They've added the little export bumper irons, which I think is a very cool touch as well. Isn't it beautiful? So whatever your mini budget, whatever your aspiration, we have got the perfect mini for you here, whether it's a Cooper S recreation, a 59, a late 2000, Narrow arch, wide arch, we've got it. But now I'm going to take you outside to what we call Paul Cowan's Pocket Money Corner. Welcome to the outside. Now, you know this is my favourite part of the auction because in this row of epic awesomeness are many, many portable cars, cars that have no reserve, cars that you get to choose the price of. So a lot of these cars will be on sale from the first bid, the first click of the mouse. Starting with this, I love this, 1987 Range Rover. And there again, my iPad's decided to shut itself down. 1987 Range Rover, it's done 141,000 miles. As you can see, it's been extensively prepped for off-road. I think that's fair to say. Everything from the substantial bumper and skid plate underneath, if you look. It's also been bored out to 4.4 litres. It sounds epic. And as you can imagine, it is an authentic off-roader. So as you can see, it comes with suitable corrosion and crust. It's got a lot of character and patina. This is by no way, by no means, a show-winning motor car. But what it is, I am sure, is a huge amount of fun. You've got your roof rack, your spare tire, you've got your jacked-up suspension, you've got your off-road tires. 
it, it just looks right, doesn't it? It looks right for the job it's designed to do, which is to wade through water, go off-road, or just park outside the pub looking epic. And this car has no reserve. Now, please don't do this, because I think it would be a shame. This is probably worth way more if you split it for bits, particularly with a 4.4 V8. But I hope the person that buys that treats it in the manner to which it's become accustomed and just uses it and abuses it off-road. It's going to be the perfect tool. We'll tow anything, go anywhere. And as I say, no reserves, so you get to choose the price. This is interesting, very interesting car, this one, because it's a 1994 Ford RS2000, but it's a 4x4, so that's an incredibly rare car anyway. Now, it looks good on camera, I'll give you that, but come close, let me show you some of the imperfections. Some of the bodywork is really very nice, doors are good, but if you look around here, look, just getting a few bubbles and cauliflowers on the tailgate, you're getting a little bit of remedial arch work, I think that could possibly be done to a slightly higher standard, that one. But we are being super realistic, and as is our lovely vendor, because this car is offered with no reserve. But it's showing 36,000 miles, which has every chance of being correct. It's got books with it. It's got potential. It's got the Recaros, it's got all the bits. It works, it drives, but it is a project. So please bid on it, have a good look at the book pack, come and have a look at the car itself. It needs bodywork, it needs love. But for that reason, it's no reserve. And if you can find me another one of those for sale today, I will eat my hat, because none of them survived. Not many RSs anyway, but 4x4s are incredibly rare. And if you can't afford a Cosworth, 50, 60,000 pounds now, come and bid on this, next best thing. A little bit slower, no less cool. Now I have a huge soft spot for these. This is a 2006 Nissan 350Z. We all know how good these are. So these are bomb proof, normally aspirated, rear wheel drive, classic. This is Nissan doing what they did best when they were Datsun, but only with the V6 engine. Manual, it's got the raised forge wheels on it as well. It's got the GT pack, 16 stamps in the service book, and MOT'd to May 2004. And when it went through its last MOT, ladies and gents, it just flew through, not even a single advisory. Four to five grand, my Cowland prediction for the day. That's your last chance. This is your last chance, guys, to get on board with these. Four to five grand, they're too cheap too cheap. Think of what these are contemporary with. Bless you, Elliot. Our cameraman just had a little sneeze there. He's allergic to being outside with me. Four to five grand you could buy that for. I just think what it represents, a true front engine, rear wheel drive, manual sports car with all of that provenance and history and the components that these have for four to five grand, that cannot last, ladies and gents. I think that's an instant money maker. Very good on the body. Just a couple of tiny little bits. There's a tiny little bleb there. But exceptionally clean and tidy, doesn't really need much. I'd get that wing sorted as and when, but just drive it in the meantime and have fun with it. And my word, can you have fun in a 350? They're mega, absolutely mega thing. This is good, isn't it? Haggerty Festival of the Unexceptional. We always talk about it. It's one of my favorite shows on the calendar. It's where you take cars that were once everywhere on everybody's drive and everybody's gran had one or everyone's mum had one, everyone's dad had one, and you celebrate them. And this is exactly that car. This is a Rover Metro 1.4i. 28,000 miles, two former keepers, original spec, it's got all of its dealer plates and uh, window stickers, toolkit, car jack, everything's there. Just come and have a look, just do a spin around this L. What a tidy, neat little car. And they actually don't drive bad at all as well, these, you know. Metros get really bad press, but unless you've actually driven a sorted one, and particularly a low mileage sorted one, they're really nice to drive. My mum had one, my nan had one. I would like one, actually. Good engine as well. The 1.4 bowls along. But again, what a really usable, practical little city car. You can take that anywhere, park it in a tiny space, and they're cool. Love that. This is a bit of fun. 1972 Vanden Plas, and the debate will rage forever of whether you pronounce it Vanden Pla or Vanden Plas. I am assured by very good people with great authority that because it's a Belgian origin name, it is Vanden Plas, and I will die on that hill until I'm old and grey. Nice, Van der Plas Princess, if you look through, this is the equivalent of driving a little Rolls Royce, basically, because you've got your tray back tables, you've got your carpets, you've got your Connolly leather, everything is in there, your beautiful walnut dashboard, but all inside this lovely little 1300, fresh MOT, great patina, rare automatic, it's a baby waft, it's a baby Bentley. Don't get me wrong, the bodywork on this displays signs of older paintwork, and it will need some love, you can just see, it's a little bit wavy on the sills. And she's had a bit of paintwork, but what a beautiful thing, just to tool around in, have some fun with. To me, picnic basket in the back, 
drive out to a classic car show, a couple of deck chairs, you've wafted there in comfort and you haven't spent a lot of money together because we're offering this with no reserve. Find me another, they never come up for sale, ever. And if you can just do the bodywork as you go along, you'll have a lot of fun with that. Capri 2 Liter S, one of the classics in silver. You can pretend that you're a cut price budget special professionals in this. You can be Bodian Door with a two liter engine instead. 1986, two former keepers, 85,000 miles. Matching uni oils on it, a long MOT. An original spec, let's have a look. So it's had a bit of paint, it needs a bit of paint. There's a few bubbles on the wing there. What else have we got? The sunroof, I would suggest, has leaked at some point because that's been sealed in. So you're going to have some work to do there. The interior is very nice. There's a bit of gaff tape on the steering wheels. This is very much a fixer-upper, but because of that, you can have fun with it while you're driving it. It's four and a half to five and a half grand. That's very cheap for a nice Capri. It really is. Two litre S, great model. Silver, because of the professionals, one of the best colours ever. She needs love. Again, drive her whilst improving her, because you can see there's wings to do, bumpers need refurbishing, but none of that will enjoy your ownership with it whilst you're improving it. And I do like cars that you can smoke about and have some fun with while you're improving them. And at four and a half to five and a half, that's a cheap Ford. On to the Quattro Porte, the 1997 Quattro Porte, I think is one of the most amazing cars. Because if you look around here, look, you get the Gandini arch. Now Gandini, one of the most, most amazing car designers of our time, known for the Countach, of course. And he put the Countach arch on the Quattro Porte which is his little signature move. It just looks really cool, doesn't it? 52,000 miles, original spec, full service history and document pack. What a great colour combination. Got great tyres as well, got some Bridgestones on it. These are a lot of fun. You do have to take a Brave pill when you buy any old Maserati. When they work, they are the most rewarding and wonderful car in the world. When they don't work, it's probably going to be quite expensive. But if you can take that juxtaposition between awesomeness and potential expense, there is nothing better. Have a look inside and you'll see why. I can't open the door because they're all locked, but if you can just see, look at the steering wheel on that, look. It's acres of wood, there's a forest of wood in there. And remember, that's only done 52,000 miles. These are iconic, that word gets overused a lot. But Quattroporte really is. And what I love about them, it's a really hard car to pinpoint in terms of the sort of class structure of classic cars, where they sit. Very few cars you can turn up and park anywhere and everyone gives you that nod of respect. But an old Mazda Quattroporte, they do. Not least of all because other car enthusiasts feel your pain, knowing how brave you are running such a left field choice. But I do think it's worth it. Again, one of those cars, a good specialist will see you right and stop you from having such heinous bills. But so cool, so cool. Now this was in our previous sale. The vendor has lowered the reserve a little bit. This car is going to be expensive because this car is incredibly nice. I have to say, 1996 Honda Prelude VTEC four-wheel steer. We think, according to DVLA data, there's nine of these left. Because when was the last time you saw one? As I walk around this car, it is impossibly hard to fault. The paintwork, the wheels, the interior. It has done 62,000 miles. It's got three previous owners. It's got a lot of service history. And everywhere you look, at least it's going to do a quick spin for you now. Look at it, look at it. These are a bit like old Mercs really, these will be here forever. Long after we've gone, there will just be old Mercedes, cockroaches and Honda Preludes because they're just bomb proof. But they're also, they drive like a new car. If you drive a 90s Honda, it's been well looked after, it drives like neat. And this one really does, the lads have driven this, it's exceptional. Mega history, mega condition, needs nothing this. So eight and a half to nine and a half, not inexpensive for 1990s Honda, but it's such a desirable model in such lovely condition. I actually think that car's very cheap. I do think you'd struggle to find the nicer one and you really couldn't restore a bad one to that standard for that money. And always better to buy a nice original car than restore a bad one, always. This is a sentimental value. That's the way to go. This is rather fun, isn't it? 1978 midget. I do like a midget, I don't really fit in them. They're not for me. I don't think they were designed for six foot four lads with very big legs that were slightly overweight. But factory hard top, which is always a nice addition as well. Very, very nice inside, lovely interior. You're not gonna spend a lot of money buying this. It's showing 14,000 miles, which will either be a speedo reset or it's going around the clock. The paint is good, but not perfect. There's plenty of it, and very, very little rot that I can see as well. I would say that paint's been on a while, and where you don't want them to come through, it isn't. Yeah, that is nice, isn't it? Chrome bumper midget, I think, is a really attractive, very nice little car. They're super fun to drive. Our friends at NGOC Spares can get you anything you need for that the next working day. 
So very low temperature, low maintenance classic that you can have a lot of fun with. Good scene as well, the MG scene. There's a reason that these cars are so popular. It's because they look nice, they're easy to drive, and they're cheap and fun to live with. But this car's no reserve. So you can buy that for not a lot of cash and smoke around in the summer, take the hard top off, or use it in the winter and be one. So moving on to this, this is a 1982 1.6L. Capri, literally, this is as basic as they got. Great story, I actually once gave one of these to my brother, my little brother, for his 17th birthday. I took one in part exchange for not a lot of money and I actually gave him one for his birthday. It might even be this one, actually. I can't remember the number. So what can I say about this? It's actually very level and lovely. 1.6, not the fastest, but then if you look this good, why would you want to drive away from one of those admiring glances? What it is, is very, very nice on the body, which makes me think it probably isn't the one that I gave my brother for his birthday. So not fast, but impeccably stylish. Very nice period colour. Owned from new until 2019, original bill of sale, very pleasing colour, very smart and tidy car though. Don't be put off by the fact that you can run faster than this car because the 1.6 pulls along. You can't drive faster than 70 mile an hour anyway, it's illegal. So just cruise around, looking epic for not a lot of money. Seven to eight thousand pounds reflects the fact that bodily, it is very, very nice this car. It doesn't really need anything just for you to drive around slowly, not getting a speeding ticket. If you're on nine points with your license, maybe this is the car for you because it's stylish and slow but I love it. It is really good on the body, actually. That's a nice car. On to, we love an E36, excuse the plane flying over our heads. 1996 328 cab with, I think, M3 aspirations, because it's got a nice set of M3 replica wheels, some genuine M3 mirrors and body kit on it as well. 87,000 miles, Alpine white, which is very period cool. Good MOT history with the car. It's not going to be expensive, this. It's hard to find a nice price range E36 these days. They've all gone up a bit. As I say, this is kind of an M3 rep. You've got the M3 backlights look. You've got all the appropriate bumpers and kit. The hood's in very nice condition. The back window's good. The threads are decent. The seats are nice. And it's fabric interior, which I actually quite like in a convertible because it stops you getting burnt when you get back in. That's four to five grand. That's a nice, inexpensive way to tool around. And I do like an E36 cab. Don't you think they look good? I think they've aged impeccably well, and I think they're getting better and better looking with age. I would like to own that. I'm sure Mrs. Carlin would love to own that. Going back to great starter classics, I tweeted about this the other day because I love it so much. It's just so honest. Lovely little 1971 MGB GT, and I don't know what it is. As I'm getting older, I think the MGB GT is just aging to become one of the most handsome classic cars at any price point. I mean, just come and have a look. There's a lovely three-court shot here, Elliot. Just come and have a look at that how nice that looks. I particularly love the front spoiler on this as well. I love the fact the suspension is sitting a bit lower. I love the Robasto roof on it. It's got a really nice interior. It's a chrome bumper car. I think you would struggle at three or four times the price point to find a car that's more fun to own, more fun to drive. If you haven't driven an MG, a lot of people overlook them because they are such a fish and chips classic, because they're everywhere. They're like belly buttons, everyone's got one. But there's a reason for that. There's a reason that so many people love MGs. It's because they drive impeccably well. There's an amazing video of Dickie Meaden, one of my writing and driving heroes, driving an MGB on YouTube, which I urge you to download and look at if you're thinking about buying this car. And he tells you, and he's a much, much, much better driver than I am, why these cars are so good. The balance of this chassis, the poise of the car. The engines are great. They just go forever if you look after them. Everything's very simple. You can work on them yourself. And you can buy this car for three and a half to four and a half grand. And I think, again, if you look at the top end of the chrome bumper market, that's an inexpensive car. Now, it is by no means perfect. There's little wobbles and bubbles on the paint. There's a couple of cracks there. They feel like fiberglass wings as well. They went rot. So it's not the purest car by any stretch of the imagination, but I do love this. I keep going back to it. Cars that you can have fun with today and enjoy and improve whilst you drive, I think are the future of the hobby. Because when you take a car off the road and put loads of time and money into it, you lose interest. When you can drive it and enjoy it and take it to shows and knock the edges off it, they're the ones. Three and a half to four and a half grand, have a bid on that. I don't think you'll be disappointed. We love a Jag, an XK8, the modern day E-type we call it. Four litre coupe, this one with 112,000 miles. It's auto, of course. Great combination, colour wise. Got lovely black exterior, beige interior, great history. And it drives really well. Again, we keep going back to cars you can buy for now that don't cost a huge amount of money, that won't ever be this cheap again, and we'll all look back. Do you remember when XGSs were for nothing? 
The XK8 is going through that period at the moment. You can buy them for a few thousand pounds. If you know what you're doing, if you look for the parts, you can find decent parts to keep them going. Good specialists can keep them on the road. They don't have to be as scary as you purport them to be. Read the buyer's guides, have a look. They're good cars. They're robust cars underneath. And I say a decent specialist will help you keep it on the road. That's a no reserve car. I can't think of anything that looks nicer. For that money, that will be a few thousand and really nice to drive. Now you recognize this car, I love this. The owner that's bought this car previously from us has had his fun with it, he's putting it back into the sale. We love that. A lot of people use this as a toy box and we're all for that. So a lot of people will come, buy a car that they've always lusted after, have a few months or a year or two with it, put it back in the sale, buy something else, do it again. It's a bit like that phone box in your local village where you put a book in, take a book out. Use just like that, exactly like that. And that's what this gentleman's done. He's had fun with this car, beautiful Honda Aerodeck 2.2. You remember last time, it's just probably the best car in the country. If you want a 2.2 aero deck, first of all, good luck finding one. But if you do, it won't be as nice as this, I can guarantee it. Because the low mileage, three former keepers, original spec, 12 service books, electric sunroof. We only think there's six left in the UK. There's none left, and none of them are this nice. Guarantee it. Pretty much flawless. What can I give you? It's got original plates on it. It's got air conditioning. I think if you came to Haggerty Festival, with an exception of if you can get a ticket, they would welcome you like a long lost brother because this is a really, really nice thing. Again, cars you're used to seeing in a lot of places that you don't see now, that one. Got a little kiss on the front bumper there. It's a little mark on the front bumper which you want to sort out. But apart from that, she's lovely. Four to five thousand pounds would buy you that car. Now I am unexplicably excited about this car. I don't I just, they seem to have aged well, don't they? The Mazda 323F, do you remember again when these were everywhere? Tell me, honestly, when was the last time you saw one? I haven't seen one of these for ages. This is lovely. 1996 323 1.5 GLX, 66,000 mile manual. One family owner until last year, original spec. We think there's three of these left. That's why we've not seen one, guys. 11 stamps in the book, an original book pack and everything. Just look. This is when Mazda was styling cars. This is just a family hatchback. The idea of this is, you know, a small family buys one of these to transport themselves and children to school, swimming, things of that mundane nature. But no one told the styling department that, did they? They just went, you know what, lads, just design the car you want. So I think it's a really pretty, it's almost, almost coupe body style. You've got the practicality of five doors. This one is very nice on the body. Unfortunately, some scallywag has scratched down the back here. Obviously jealous of the sweet 323 that this person had. But apart from that, it's perfect. It's such a shame. We're gonna have a go at buffing that out, but I think you might just have to budget to respray that quarter. Obviously somebody jealous of having a car this cool has had to scratch it, I think that's unfortunate. But you could buy that, no reserve car, for who knows, 1,500 quid, two grand? I'd be the envy of your friends. How many cars exist on the road where there's three examples? You're into the, well, even a Veyron is 40 times more prevalent than that. Another car that I think is massively underrated is this. We did one of these on the show. This is a 66 Rover P6. Why are these cars so good and why are they so cheap? There's this weird Venn diagram of awesomeness versus price that these cars haven't managed to eclipse yet. They're very clever car, these, very well engineered. And also what I love about them is all of these body panels sit unstressed effectively on a skeleton frame, a bit like a Citroen DS if you've ever had one of those. So they're very easy. If you've got one like a rusty wing, that just bolts off doors, even the roof, everything unbolts basically. This is a nice car, great color. It's only the two liter. It's so again, not the fastest car, 84,000 mile manual, but a clever car. If you've never driven one, they drive like a much younger car. They drive more like a late seventies, early eighties cars. Very clever to deal on rear end on these inboard brakes. Lots of forward thinking. They won car of the year at the time when they were launched. And I like them. This will be single figure thousands, which really belies how good the car is and what a lovely thing they are to drive. I like the 350, I think they are far too cheap for how good they are, and it can't last. Moving on to this personal favourite of mine, perhaps my third favourite car on the sale, 1992 Polo 1.3 Genesis, and yes, it was named after the band of the same name, believe it or not. Very smart car, 115,000 miles, but you know a well-maintained Volkswagen wears its miles well. Great interior, it's got the tight interior, particularly loving the wheel choice. Loads of history, just straight and level and fresh and nice. And apart from the wheels and suspension, which I think really add to it, not messed about with in any way at all. You don't see bread vans anymore either, do you? They were everywhere once, everybody had one. They rotted away, but the arches on this are fabulous on the back. 
The interior is nice. It's had a very, very easy life. I would like to own this. I'd like this in my water cool Volkswagen collection. Three and a half to four and a half grand. It doesn't need to break the bank. And if you're looking for something that epitomizes practical classic, cheap to run, cheap to own, cheap to buy, easy to drive, easy to park. There she is. Get rid of your lease car, kids. Don't have a lease car. Drive a practical classic that you can use every day. Don't get debts and you can save up your mortgage for your first house. There you go. That's dad advice. Again, a bit like the Mazda. I'm, I'm inexplicably drawn to this. I think this is, this has got the X factors, that indefinable something that good, cheap, fun classic cars have that draw you to them thinking, you know what, I could have a lot of inexpensive fun here. And Elliot, I'm going to invite you around to look at the brakes. Because this is a no reserve car. This is not going to be a huge amount of money. I always like, when I buy an old car or try to buy an old car, I look at things like, what condition are the brakes in? Have they been spending money on the things that you don't see that nobody apart from the MOT tester cares about, but you as the next potential owner want to be looking at? So someone's just done full brake overhaul, really good quality tires on there. This car has done 70,000 miles. It's a manual, amazing MOT history, all factory radio, lovely unmolested paint. There's a, this is how into detail I'm getting. There's a, there's a chip there. On, on this no reserve car. When the car's that straight and level, when things like one chip is shouting out at you, you know it's a good car. But again, don't you think it's really hard to find one of these? I've not seen one of these recently, at a nice price range that isn't messed about with, molested, didn't go through the tuning modifying area with loads of bits stuck to it. I think to find a nice factory fresh car in a lovely colour with a good history and a sensible mileage, and like I said, this one's only done 70, I think that's a bit of a future treasure. I really do. I like that very much and would like to own it. And believe me, if it goes for small amounts of money, I will be bidding on it. On to one of my personal favorites, the Calibra. If you were being mean, you would say it's a Cavalier in a party frog, but I don't really mind that because it was just the democratization of a very cool looking coupe. You got, of course, the DTM history with these as well. These were a very successful DTM car. This is a red top as well. The best engine that I think Vauxhall ever did. 35,000 mile manual, great colour, loads of paperwork, original spec. At the time, these were always sold as one of the lowest drag coefficients of any car on sale. I think like 0.29 or something ridiculous, or 0.32, very low anyway. That was what they did, because you look at the headlight height, look. Cal, look how low the headlight profile is. But with the red top, the 4x4s, everyone goes, oh, you want a turbo 4x4, four, uh, four four. you don't, because they're such hard work to look after. We had one for a bit. And the problem is you have to swap the tires. The center diff is so chocolatey. If you don't keep rotating the tires, I think it's every two or 3,000 miles, it winds the diff up. Just the tread height in the tires is enough to upset the diff. What you want for an easy life, red top, front wheel drive. That car is six and a half to seven and a half grand. It's lovely. And again, there's not many Calibras left and there really aren't many in that condition. I like that a lot. Not least of all because of the engine and the color. Other cars that have great engines and great colours, this another 2 litre S, we have them all. All of Cheshire's 2 litre S Capris are here, the Manor Park Classics. 57,000 miles, we think this is original. Looking around it, I can't see where this has had much of anything at all other than love and polish. Very rare car in this colour combination, fresh MOT, it's an S spec. We did a 2 litre S on the show. This has got the correct seats, look, it's got factory sunroof. Everything on this car appears to be as it left the showroom. If you look around here, there's a few cauliflowers coming through. You're going to want to spend a little bit to keep on top of her because she's very, very nice and you want to maintain what is already there. But if you want to buy an original unrestored car, like I said, I don't think this has had anything. I don't think this has had much of much at all. This all looks like factory paint to me. So buy that, seven to eight grand. Budget a little bit to just keep her going. She's going to need a little bit of love on the wings soon and catch it early, it won't be expensive to do. What a lovely thing. I do like buying unrestored cars because you can see everything you're going to get. Mercs, we always have some nice Mercs, don't we? 124 Coupe, one of my favourites. One of the most drivable, usable cars, again, that you can have. 89 300 CE, so the proper engine. She shovels along 97,000 miles, which is running in mileage on one of these. Three litre, straight six, clean MOT. Lots of bills spent recently. And this is an interesting market, the 124s, because they're such usable cars, even if you maintain them badly, they will just keep going. They're so strong and so tough. So when you're buying one, look for one that's got a good history that's had some money spent on it, because the difference between an abused one and one that's got a good history is massive when you come to resell. This has got a great history. It's got a little bit of 
paint work needs to be done, there's some oxidisation. I would budget to paint the rear boot lid on the back of this. That's just started to go. That will need at least a strip and repaint on there. The signs are very good. The tyres are very good on there. It's had recent new tyres and the interior is lovely as well. So a little bit of a spruce up, paint on the boot, bit of a polish. Got a great car there. And four and a half to five and a half grand. They were like this, but I must stress to you, ladies and gentlemen, this is a restoration project. In fact, Elliot, come in, look at this. We've got some small biocultures growing on the door here. So those of you, your Ford fans will know, an ST200 is a rare car. V6 engine, of course, super, super rare in the touring car blue. Becoming incredibly desirable, but buy this car knowing that pretty much you're going to have to go through it and extensively restore it. So what can I tell you? The good parts. It's a manual. 52,000 miles, that's good. It's genuine imperial blue, runs, drives and stops, five former keepers. There's only 196 of these left. And Ford people are realizing that they play quite an important part in the story of fast forwards. So people are starting to buy them. Mike Fernie on Drive Tribe, very good channel. He's got a lovely ST restoration that he did. They're becoming collectible, they're becoming desirable. And for that reason, people are prepared to spend money on them. This is a restoration project that needs a lot of money and for that reason it's no reserve so you get to tell me how much you think it's worth on to this 190 i say it every time i see a 190 the perfect starter classic if you haven't got massive budgets and you want a car that can be your only car you can drive to work you just take the family in that's safe reliable starts and stops doesn't cost a lot of money to run it's a 190 116,000 miles this one is a two liter so not fast but reliable strong tough Lovely interior on this one as well. Very rare colour with the colour-coded side skirt. It's just, again, just come and look from here, Al. Look at the beautiful side profile of a 190. A little bit of fade on the door, and it looks like it's had the rear door painted. I don't know if that comes across on the camera. There's a slight colour difference here to here. Now, you might find when you buff the lacquer on that, you might find that the, that's actually fade on the lacquer. That's had paint there. But this is not going to be an expensive car. This is going to be somewhere between three and four thousand pounds and it's remarkably straight and lovely. If you've never driven an old Merc, just honestly have a go, come and have a go in one because nothing drives quite like them, nothing is usable like them, and they just hold the money. It'll always be worth what you pay for it, and it won't cost you a lot to keep it going. And they're rarely crashed, so they're also quite cheap to insure. Moving on to another lovely car, another 192 litre. With trims, you know my love for Mercedes on trims, guys. They just look so good. 118,000 miles, original spec, great service history. This one also has a sunroof and really good interior. And then another lovely colour combination. What's good about this car? Well, apart from everything I've just said, particularly like the colour, no reserve. So if you're thinking, I want to get into classic cars, I want to have something that I can spanner myself, I can insure, I can drive, I can afford, I can have fun with, I can join the scene, I haven't got a bottomless pockets. Start here, my friends. And it looks nice too. So there you go, that is the end of part two. There's a third video. If you haven't seen the first video, you wanna go back and watch that one. And there's even a bike video as well. So make sure that you've subscribed, you've liked to get all these videos as they come out. Make sure you've registered at manaparkclassics.com and I'll see you online or in person on the 10th of June.